Yasmin Suka highlights the 12 year anniversary of the commemoration of Molivaiko. She willingly joins in solidarity with the Tamil community from all over the world for this commemoration. She discusses the tens of thousands who have died in Sri Lanka, the suffering and trauma the survivors and the Tamil community have endured, all of the loved ones that have perished, those that were imprisoned in the rehabilitation camps and manic farms, and so much unforgivable tragedies the Tamil community has faced. Suka talks about the awareness of sexual violence and torture took place in these camps that have continued for many years ahead. While we mourn, we must also remember the mothers crying out for help as they continue the search for their loved ones from the hands of the Sri Lankan security forces. We call out to those opposing and denying the torture and oppression that has continued in Sri Lanka. Watch her touching speech discussing Muli Vaiko in her following speech. I would like to thank all of you for asking me to send this message on the 12th anniversary of the commemoration of Muli Vaikal. I'm really touched by it. I send this message on behalf of myself, Francis Harrison, and all my colleagues at the International Truth and Justice Project. We join in solidarity with the Tamil community worldwide on this commemoration of Muli Vaikal. We remember the tens of thousands who died in the killing fields of Sri Lanka. The trauma and the suffering of the survivors who lost loved ones, as well as those who were imprisoned in Manic Farm and the rehabilitation camps is deeply felt by us all. We know now that torture and sexual violence was rife in these camps and that it also continued for many years under successive regimes. As we mourn, we also remember the desperate pleas of the mothers of the disappeared as they continue to search for their loved ones and as they yearn to learn the truth and fate of those who were disappeared at the hands of the Sri Lankan security forces. We also call upon those who continue to deny that torture and repression have continued in Sri Lanka to acknowledge that this denial shames us all. This week, as the relatives of victims were getting ready to install a plaque at the Mulivaikal Memorial Site, the granite plaque disappeared overnight and the 10-year-old makeshift memorial was demolished. The demolition is particularly pernicious as the memorials were built in response to the vicious destruction of 25 massive cemeteries in the north and the east containing more than 20,000 gravestones. The refusal to allow survivors to mourn and memorialize is a crime and illustrates the oppressive situation that minority communities are facing on the ground in Sri Lanka. Of course, 12 years have passed since the war ended and the international community was called upon to ensure that justice and accountability should prevail for the grave international crimes committed in Sri Lanka. The Human Rights Council took a progressive step this year in March at the 46th session of the Human Rights Council and delivered a resounding blow to the government of Sri Lanka when it rejected their attempts to convince the world that they should be allowed to continue with domestic accountability initiatives. The Human Rights Council, deeply distrustful of the government of Sri Lanka, rejected their lies and denial about the killings, the enforced disappearances, the summary executions, the torture and cruel and inhuman treatment, and mandated the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights to collect and preserve evidence of the crimes committed including for the final phase of the conflict. The Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights has an 18-month mandate to collect evidence, to analyze it, and to identify where gaps in the evidence exist. They will then gather evidence to fill the gaps and are required to use the information and evidence they gather to support accountability efforts in other jurisdictions. 
But what does this mean for all of you? It requires action. All of you need to lobby your respective governments and war crimes prosecutors to bring cases in your country under universal jurisdiction. Member states can also approach the Office of the High Commissioner to provide evidence that they have gathered during the war and in the aftermath and to make such evidence available to that office. Their war crimes prosecutors can also request evidence to support prosecutions and other accountability mechanisms in their own countries. Another area of work that we can all make count is sanctions. Many of you have heard of global Magnitsky sanctions in the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, and the European Union. While all countries have different criteria for their sanctions regimes, we all need to consider that if we are unable to punish perpetrators criminally, then we need to consider visa vetting and sanctions as other options for accountability. Shivendra Silva and his family have been sanctioned by the United States. They cannot travel there. The International Truth and Justice Project has in the course of the last two years prepared a confidential dossier on him, setting out his role in earlier periods of conflict as well as during the final phase of the conflict in Sri Lanka, which we have made available to the United States and other sanctions bodies. Recently, we submitted a request to the global sanctions body in the United Kingdom to have Shavendra Silva sanctioned there as well. All of you need to be putting pressure on the British government, including writing to your local MPs to ensure that this happens. You can also write, if you live in other countries, to your own governments and ask them to sanction Shivendra as well. But this is only a beginning, and the ITJP continues to work on other dossiers so we can hold other Sri Lankan perpetrators of serious international crimes accountable. The repression, of course, continues, including the killings in Sri Lanka, with members of minority communities subject to intense surveillance and intimidation, human rights defenders and witnesses fear for their lives. But we need to continue to monitor the situation, to document the violations, and to ensure that we put the spotlight on the government's actions. At the same time, we need to be careful about confidentiality and witness protection. The International Truth and Justice Project recently called upon the international community to prevent the appointment of Mohan Perez to the prestigious United Nations International Law Commission, as he is compromised by his failure during his term in office as Attorney General of Sri Lanka. He failed to hold accountable the perpetrators of enforced disappearances, executions, torture and rape. In terms of actions you can take, we need you all to pressure your government to ensure that he's not appointed to the Law Commission as his appointment would be an affront to victims and an assault on the rule of law. All of us in our own ways need to be creative and courageous, ensuring that we never forget the pursuit of justice and accountability. This is the only way we can ensure that those who lost their lives 12 years ago at Mulivaikal in the quest for freedom did not do so in vain. I thank you.